Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Koch here for Wildwood Vision, I guess we're calling it. What? Uh, here at the Premier Builders Guild, where it is basically a coven of guitar savagery. And a practitioner of which is sitting to my right, to your left, ladies and gentlemen. That is Dennis. What's your last name? Fano. Just kidding. I'm going to tell you, what, the first time I saw these guitars was at a little place and well actually it's not too little is it that up in new york where they carry your guitars and your guitars are the most delightful mutation of like the greatest of all the little guitar nuggets but mutated and cross-pollinated in the most fascinating kind of fantasy island type of ways would you not say of course i would yeah is that wrong to say no that's quite embrace right. it dennis yes quite right now tell us a little bit about the specimen i'm holding right here it's kind of like a a telly junior less polished thingamabob yeah that's one way of putting it um, this particular example, we have a 200-year-old uh, reclaimed spruce body. Uh, the material came from a retail space in Manhattan, uh, lower Manhattan, that was dismantled, uh, salvaged by uh, the, uh, uh, an Amish mill that's not far from me in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And um, uh, it, it, it's gorgeous stuff. Uh, what they normally do is take this stuff, slice it down, and uh, make flooring out of it. But I get to them before they slice it and we uh, make some beautiful instruments out of it. This is a limited run that we're doing. Absolutely. I was just playing a little bit, man. It sounds fantastic. And one of the things I was mentioning before you before we went on the air is, is that even though it has the, the P90-ish thing with the tele pickup, you've really managed to make it so that the pickups are very well balanced. Because a lot of times you pick up a tele that has that kind of a pickup scenario and it's always kind of a little weighted slightly towards the neck pickup side of things. That's right. Yeah. It's real easy to go uh, too heavy on that neck pickup with the P90. It's going to overpower that bridge pickup. Uh, but I worked with Lindy Fralin, uh, experimented quite a bit, and came up with a, a pretty good balance by underwinding that P90 and uh, pairing it up nicely with the, the Tele pickup. So how'd you get started doing these guitars, and how long you've been doing it, and tell us a little bit about the, kind of your favorite little mutations of what to cross-pollinate. I've been doing this for a long time. I started kind of tinkering on my own instruments way back in the mid-80s. Tinkering on his own instruments. Sorry. It's an X-rated show, or uh, you know, and slowly but surely got more serious about it, and uh, went from tinkering on my guitars and basses to uh, to my friends, and then it started to spread, and um, did a little apprenticeship of sorts, working on all kinds of instruments, working at Matt Yuminoff Guitars on Bleecker Street in the Village. A little plug for Matt there, um, and uh, struck out on my own, started building my own guitars, um, have my own designs. Those are still sort of in the vault. Uh, there's a few of those floating around. But uh, came up with the idea for, for the Alt De Facto line, blending the uh, my favorite elements of classic guitars uh, from the makers of uh, the US makers right. from the 50s, um, and just putting them in a way, you know, together in a way that, uh, that makes a lot of sense. And, um, you know, it's real easy to kind of just mash stuff up for the hell of it, you know, for, but, Absolutely. yeah, but um, doing it in an intelligent way that uh, people can relate to, uh, uh, it, it seems to be working, so. Indeed. Now, when you come up with these ideas, uh, do you have, like, a kind of a thing that set out in your mind of, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z this year because I know I'm going to get, like, this unique wood or whatever the case may be? How much is it that versus people calling you up, coming up with their own little scenarios that they want to do variations of things you've already done? It started out just building the instruments that I wanted to, you know, to, to own myself, but couldn't afford to keep them, so I had to sell them. Um, and luckily, as I, you know, put those out there, started approaching a couple of dealers, um, it, you know, uh, other people were into the idea as well. So the majority of the ideas uh, these days are uh, the instruments that we're making are, are ordered okay. by dealers. Um, they look at what I've done in the past, and uh, they're sort of picking and choosing from you know, specs and options that we offer. We have a wide variety of, of custom options, uh, not only paint, but uh, in terms of materials that we use, uh, both for the body, the neck, uh, pick guard materials, knobs. Um, so you can really customize uh, a Fano guitar to, uh, even though it is a quote unquote standard guitar, you can customize it uh, in a number of ways. Um, but yeah, I'm still working on custom instruments like the one that you have in your hand there, uh, that 200 year old reclaimed spruce. That's something that, I didn't have the idea to do until I found the material. So yeah, I mean, they, they really come out of, uh, you know, a couple of different uh, avenues, you know. Excellent. Now, I suppose it's hard to say depending on what the guitar is, but 
how many guitars do you think you, you churn out in a, in a month, or how does it work exactly? You probably have things that you're working on at the same time, I would imagine. Yeah, I don't churn out guitar. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I mean, when you craft these majestic instruments. And, and I don't take it as a slight, but uh, uh, I wish I could churn out more. Uh, the problem is, is I take way too much time, probably more time than, than uh, most other people would, would like me to, uh, to build an instrument. Um, I, I guess I'm fairly meticulous and... Uh, Quality is good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, we have a production shop in California, in Arroyo Grande, that uh, they make the majority of the Fano guitars that you're going to find. Okay. Um, I build a handful of instruments, uh, sort of like a custom shop, but uh, the output is relatively small. You know, a uh, couple of instruments a month uh, come out of my shop in a good month. So, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time designing our, our new line, which we haven't talked about yet, the Spheres. Uh, a lot of 2011, probably majority of it, you know, a good six months of it was spent designing, prototyping, and uh, working on those. So last year was a slow year for me as far as output uh, in terms of actual instruments, but looking to get a few more out in 2012. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. I think I'm going to just tickle on this a little bit, if that's okay, if you wouldn't mind holding this mic reopening. Please do. Majestic. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you.